Hey folks, looking to get a bit stronger, looking to get a bit leaner during this COVID-19 lockdown. Hey, if that's the case, it's totally doable. Don't think because the gyms aren't open that you can't make it happen. If you want to start the conversation, if you want to get something made, tailored just for you with the situation that you're living right now, don't be shy. Drop me a line, dave at davemorrow.net or head to my website at davemorrow.net. And let's start that conversation, man, and let's get you into the Facebook group and let's get you sorted. All right, today the show is brought to you by a bunch of awesome veteran-run businesses. So I'd like to give a shout-out to my good buddy Yannick at Commodus, a boxing club located in Perth, Ontario. They love to train people from beginners all the way up to competitive athletes. Their workouts are super hard but adjustable so everyone can do it and get something out of it. Kids, teenagers, adults, seniors, they work with everyone, and it's a great way to remedy anyone with ADHD. Uh They're always on the lookout for new ways to train to make it more fun and challenging. You can even compete once invited to. You can have an idea of what they're up to by watching a few of the workouts on their Facebook page, and that's at Commodus Boxing Club. That's C-O-M-O-D-U-S, Boxing Club. And that's in Perth, Ontario, or you can head to www. Commodus Boxing Club.com or Commodus Boxing Club on Facebook or Instagram. Next up, Devo FX. Devo FX are your all in one special effects makeup shop from casualty simulation with emergency first responders to creating creatures and props for your next big fe- feature film. Devo FX have the experience and the skill to see your project through to completion. Devo FX have done a multitude of applications on many of your favorite actors for several feature films and television programs. Owned and operated by Canadian Armed Forces veteran Mark DeVoe, Devo FX offers a sculpting for veterans class, giving veterans struggling with PTSD an expressive outlet. These are just a few reasons why Devo FX is suited for your next project. Go check these guys out man jeff alpa here from jeff alpa custom home of the world's most dangerous dress shirts i am a big fan of the hard to kill podcast and it's because it's all about mindset that hard to kill mindset and the best way to be hard to kill is to be the threat in your environment you do this by being on the front foot mentally physically visually and across all other planes What is a dangerous dress shirt? I'm glad you asked that question. A dangerous dress shirt is a dress shirt that is custom in both fit and design. This means that you are wearing you and not what somebody else is telling you to wear. Guaranteed to make you a force of nature that is happening to the world in any room that you enter and not some mere creature of circumstance. Check us out by Googling the world's most dangerous dress shirts. And if you want to know how to, how I became hard to kill, check out episode 18 of the Hard to Kill podcast. Enjoy the show. Folks, the Canadian Walk for Veterans is an opportunity for Canadians, veterans, first responders, and civil servants to walk shoulder to shoulder in celebration of the contributions made by the men and women who have served with pride, dignity, and courage in the name of Canada, both past and present. It is an event where veterans, their families, their friends, and all Canadians come together as an organized and harmonious community in pursuit of an understanding of the challenges veterans face transitioning and thriving in life after service. So if you want to check out and participate in this year's Walk for Remembrance, head to Facebook and type in Can Walk for Vets. So that's C-A-N-W-A-L-K, the number four vets v-e-t-s check it out like the page and register for your walk for remembrance this year
And lastly, we've got Jane Wood of Nourish the Moment or the Mindful Nutritionist. Jane Wood does not do meal plans. All right, fellas? She doesn't do a meal plan for you. She's going to look at the root cause of why you're stuffing your face, of why you can't get a grip of your nutrition, why you're having those tasty cakes at all times of the day. She's a mindful nutritionist, so she's going to make that mind-body connection for you. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So if you want to go check her out, head to Jane Wood on Facebook, and she'll be sure to set you up with a plan that is tailored for you. So head to nourishthemoment.com. That's N-O-U-R-I-S-H, the T-H-E, moment, M-O-M-E-N-T, dot com, and let Jane sort you out. All right, this episode with Keenan Erickson is all about deep health, and more specifically, what is cold therapy? If you've wondered what the hell is going on with people taking cold showers and cold baths these days, this is what this episode is all about. And we're going to delve into how it can help get rid of some belly fat and get your head and mindset zeroed in. So this is the episode for you guys. Have a listen and sit tight and enjoy. Welcome to the Hard to Kill podcast, the go-to podcast for military, LEO, and EMS professionals. Sharing ideas and experiences from around the world to make you hard to kill. Here's your host, Dave Morrow. Here we go. Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of the podcast being recorded in my new studio in my 2018 Tiguan because COVID-19, right? Uh, I'm sitting down with uh, Keenan Erickson, and he is a uh, blogger, I guess we could call you that, and uh, a, yeah. a health expert uh, with respects to deep health and a uh, CrossFit athlete, and has just got a ton of insight into how to keep our bodies working optimally. And I had to have him on because I got an awesome blog post of his about cold-induced therapy and that is something that i've been digging into in the last few weeks few months so i oh, yeah. absolutely Good had to have him on so keenan buddy thanks for coming on the show and why don't you give the listeners just a little insight in, as to who you are and what you're up to oh yeah um absolutely thank you dave for having me um so i do deep health writing i think that's probably the best way to describe it um, a lot of people would call it biohacking uh these days um uh, kind of just this idea of looking at, to me, it's more about self-improvement as a whole, but looked at through a perspective of science and biology as the base. Um, so my background is I was pursuing CrossFit games, um, kind of just attached to that as a dream. I was an athlete growing up, you know, martial arts, all this different stuff, and wanted to make a career path in that industry. And as we were kind of talking before the podcast, um, kind of like a lot of operators go through, I burnt out, you know, my adrenals were screwed. I was training like six hours a day in CrossFit for months on end, um, not properly recovering, didn't know how to do blood marker work or any of that kind of stuff. And I suffered a very large like panic attack just in the middle of a workout. Um, no traumatic trigger of any kind, just started and went through about two years of health issues from that point. Um, the fortunate side of it is in trying to pursue CrossFit as a career without resources. I was diving deep into podcasts already, guys like Kelly Sturett, um, who I now write on their blog a little bit. Um, and all I did was just dive deeper into that, but more for the health side. So where I'm at now is just, trying to get that information out there that I used to get healthy. Um, and also just for people to be able to perform at a higher level because it's all the same stuff. Um, if you have a chronic disease or a um, mental state, a lot of the things that can help you get out of that are the same things that will just make you a top performer in general. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at at this point. Beauty. Um, so let's get right into it. I want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know, 
what is cold induced therapy? Okay. Um, so cold induced therapy is the use of the cold, um, for positive biological benefits. Um, a lot of this stuff, cold included, is about going back to ancestral roots. And I think cold is a really, really interesting one because it's been not only just neglected in modern society, but I think it's been neglected for much longer than that, more like civilization as a whole. Um, and I'll kind of get into that a little bit more, but basically when you go and you're exposed to the cold, your body has systems in place that create positive biological benefits as long as you don't overdo it. Um, and we can get into more of that later. Um, but some of the examples of things you can get from cold therapy, um, even something as simple as taking a cold shower are increased uh, fat burning, um, release of endorphins. So you have improved mood, uh, less anxiety. Um, improve heart rate variability, which is a really cool health marker. It measures how your heart rate changes in response to stress. Higher levels of heart rate variability are signs of a more healthy nervous system, more healthy fight or flight response. And just going and doing a short, even just a two minute cold shower in the morning will stabilize and improve heart rate variability numbers, um, which is just a sign of your ability to handle stress. Um, so that's kind of the most basic form of it. On the other end, um, if you get into some deep, cold um, acclimation, um, not necessarily exposure, you don't want to just run out and jump in a frozen lake, but building up to this kind of stuff. I mean, there's guys out there who are doing like um, summits, like mountain summits and t-shirts and shorts. And so we're talking about, we're sorry, sorry to interrupt, but we're, we're talking about Wim Hof, right? As, as yeah, we're getting into Wim Hof. Okay. Um, but even what's interesting, so Wim Hof has a bunch of Guinness world records. He's this guy who uh, is really kind of the poster child for cold therapy, I'd say. Um, though a big element of what he does is also breathing. Um, but what Wim Hof has done is he's run a marathon in just shorts, I think in the Arctic Circle. I know he's done some stuff in the Antarctic as well. Yeah, just crazy dude. Um, but he's been doing cold exposure for like years and years and years and years, decades even. And what's really interesting is he started having scientists um, measure his blood work while doing different cold things. And he was able to do things like they injected him with like a viral poison and he was able to turn off the inflammatory response just by getting in the cold and breathing. And they were like, okay, well you are obviously an outlier. You know, you have some kind of genetic makeup that makes you different from other people. So what he did is he took a bunch of people that were new to this and trained them over the course of a very short time. Like it might have even been as short as one month or a few weekends. And they were able to replicate his same markers and results when going through the same testing. And expanded on that, the Wim Hof organization he does a uh, summit on the mountain Kilimanjaro in Africa, usually about every year, and they don't use oxygen. Um, and it's a tall enough mountain that everyone who climbs it uses oxygen support. But they don't use oxygen, and they don't do any kind of altitude training leading up to it. And they also don't typically wear cold weather gear. On top of this, his summit groups have a... 70 or 80 percent success rate which is about double that of the other groups and they tend to complete it in about half the time so it's like yeah it's crazy and it's like these aren't whim that's doing this these are other people who come and do his course all of that lack of training and then they go do this and i believe personally the reason is we have biological systems for being adapted to cold weather you know, you go far enough back in time and you're going to run into humans who the only protection they had against the cold was a cave and some leather skins. Um, at most, you know, you go further back and there's, you know, pre-technology, you know, it's going to get cold enough even in 
places that are more like Africa or, you know, wherever humans could have lived, they would be more exposed to the cold than we are typically now. Um, and there's even evidence of this um, more recently with a lot of wind stuff. Studies were put on groups like the Inuit and other groups, and they noticed all these different ways that the body would adapt to the cold and be able to handle it. And how that relates to health um, and how I like to describe it to people is like, imagine that we evolved for facing these environments and there's whole systems of our health that are in place that are not being used. And that's not a proven explanation for why the stuff WIM does is so helpful for people and gives us such powerful abilities, but it makes a lot of sense, at least to me. It's like, you know, yeah, it's like we have a whole ability to be acclimated to extremely cold weather without wearing gear and all that kind of stuff. It's like when you break an arm and you have a cast on, the arm gets weaker when the cast is on. And I think that's a good metaphor for why cold exposure is so powerful for people. And um, we've only really talked about performance, but a lot of WIMS clients um, none of this stuff is medically backed per se, although it is um, monitored. But there's a lot of people that do his course and they'll reverse symptoms of things like Parkinson's disease. Um, it's very common for WIMS students to be able to turn off their pain response to things. Um, there's a great book. Um, God, what was it called? I think it's uh, What Doesn't Kill Us. It's by a journalist who went and did WIMS stuff. And one of the guys that he interviewed was doing like a road race, fell, broke his arm, um, did wind's breathing work um, that they do to be able to handle the cold. And I want to say his, he didn't feel any pain during this experience. And also his arm healed in like a week or two, whereas they expected it to take like a month and a half. Um, so it's, I mean, it's phenomenal stuff. It's really, really cool. And it's such a powerful tool because I mean, frankly, it's basically free. I mean, if you have access to a shower, like you can start doing this stuff. So, right. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's the wild thing. And you, you touched mm -hmm. on so much stuff. And if anybody's listening for the first time and has no, no idea what uh, Wim Hof has done and his whole process, mm -hmm. it probably sounds like he's full of shit. And that was my first reaction. Like, come on, man. Like I saw him in the water. Yeah. I'm like, bullshit. Yeah. I saw him climb the mountain. Bullshit. Doing yeah. breathing, I'm like, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. But then... He's a nutty fucking guy, too. Yeah, but... Uh, and he's, he's very charismatic. And I was like, okay, he's yeah. just a huckster. But <laughs> it was a friend of mine who said, no, man, you really got to take a look at this. He's like, I've been doing this breathing shit for about a year. I feel amazing. Just yeah. the open mind. I'm like, you know what? You're right. I need to be more open-minded to this kind of stuff. And so yeah. um, I just watched his... Um, there was, a, I think, a Vice documentary. That kind yeah, of, I believe there is. It started shifting my mindset on it. Up. I was like, huh. But what mm -hmm. really cemented the whole idea that this stuff is actually um, solid scientifically mm -hmm. was uh, a lot of the research around the hypoxic induced, um, I think, uh, protein mm -hmm. um, formation during the breathing methods mm -hmm. was validated. And um, yeah. there's a Nobel Prize awarded for the research basically done in that hypoxic yeah. state. Which really said to me, oh, okay, so we've, we've basically unlocked an entire new mechanism at, at the yeah. cellular level for the human yeah. body, which scientists thought was impossible. And yeah. now it's a thing because this one guy who, after doing more research, I realized he has a freaking twin brother. It's like the perfect yeah, science does. experiment because his twin brother doesn't do any of this stuff and he doesn't have yeah. this ability. So it was like, yeah. oh my God, like talk about perfect scientific experiment. Yeah. So, um, would you be able, yeah, would you be able to talk a little bit more about what's going on mechanistically, what's going on at the cellular level for somebody who's doing, yeah. let's just stick to the cold induced part. We can talk about the, um, mm -hmm. I guess the breathing methods and stuff if we, if we have time when we get to it. Yeah. So the interesting thing on it, and, um, this actually ties into why I kind of like guys like Kelly Sturette and some of the guys that are more in the fitness realm as opposed to, uh, some people that are more in like the biohacking and health realm is that there's a lot of data, but we also still don't completely understand the mechanisms. Now I might, I bit, might be wrong in terms of like where research is at now. Like it can be hard to find research, but one thing that directly happens just from cold 
is the formation of something called brown adipose tissue or BAT. It's also called brown fat in some circles. Um, a lot of people don't realize or have forgotten that fat is actually an organ. Um, it has purposes, whether that's storing toxins or obviously providing energy if you're in a famine or a fasting state. Um, but if we look at it from the perspective, I don't know if you've ever done any hunting, but if you ever get kind of versed in that world, you look at animals different than you look at your own biology. But if you're put in those survival, you know, out in the wild scenarios, our bodies have systems for that. Like that's our home base. Um, humans have a level of brown adipose tissue and they also have white fat tissue. White fat tissue is the stuff that you think of when you think of someone who's obese. Um, brown fat, on the other hand, is actually in charge of burning the white fat. It's also, and the purpose of that, or one of them at least, is to give you body heat in the cold. Wim Hof, his brown adipose tissue percentages, his brown fat percentages, are equivalent to what most people have in their 20s. Other adults who don't do the cold exposure, their brown fat declines as they age to the point where they have almost none. Um, that is a very direct and obvious example of something that we physically have, like this is physical material that sticks around if you stay acclimated to the cold and goes away if you don't. Furthermore, brown fat tissue burns your white fat tissue. Um, they believe that presence of brown fat is a big factor in um, recovering from insulin sensitivity, diabetes, moving towards that. Um, you know, obviously not cure, although I do think that there's things that can cure uh, diabetes, but, you know, nothing that's proven or backed medically, so you can't, like, just go out and say it. But um, increasing your brown fat which happens when you expose yourself to cold and acclimate to cold, increases your ability to burn white fat and improve your insulin sensitivity. And that gets into metabolic function, which is just so tied to just everything else. Um, whole other can of worms when it comes to diet and eating and all that kind of stuff. But anything that can help your ability to burn fat and have better insulin, better blood sugar regulation, is going to help with everything else. Um, with regard to the cold, they found that you can start increasing your brown fat tissue even doing simple cold work. Like don't, you know, you don't need to be doing whims like crazy breathing stuff um, or sitting in ice baths for like, you know, 30 minutes or jumping in cold lakes, which is, you know, that whole, you know, side of things but just a daily cold shower. Um, I can't remember the percentage, but just a daily cold shower will increase your uh, brown fat tissue over time and also increase your fat burning for you know unhealthy white fat. Um, and I want to say on the average was something like 15% um, or something like that just that same day. Um, I don't remember how far ahead they measured it. You know, these effects can drop off, but anything that increases your fat burning by 15%, even if it's just for an hour, um, I mean, you're obviously so versed in the, you know, physical realm of things. You're a physical therapist, right? No, no, uh, just oh, no. I'm PT. No, I just have, uh, <laughs> no, I, okay. I, I do a lot of nutrition. I do a lot of, um, I don't have a formal okay. background in, in therapy. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a coach on that. And that's why I defer to people like Sells and Kelly and those guys that are like the doctors and that. So right. that bolster just everything that we're doing here to give a lot more context. Right. But even so, I mean, you see how big, you know, I don't know if you've seen this, but, you know, you see someone who's obese. A lot of times I see they have a lot of mechanical issues as well. It's like um, these things kind of seem to link together. And um, cold showers, you know, I, I have a buddy of mine. He was actually my first client in terms of any kind of direct coaching. Uh, but he was a bomb dog guy in uh, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And um, he was fat, even though he worked out all the time, um, lived a very healthy, independent lifestyle. He used to be a chef, so he knows how to cook well. And he ate basically paleo. But 
everyone in his family has diabetes. So his genetics are just trash when it comes to, you know, insulin. Um, one of the big things that we used, and he's, he's not like slim yet, but he's lost a good 35 pounds, was just daily cold showers. Um, that was a really big part of it. And what I really love about the cold therapy is like diet is so hard to get right because you're messing with uh, basically addiction, you know, sugary foods have addictive qualities and, you know, eating is such a big part. Like, and I'm speaking from personal experience here. Like I'm not the most disciplined when it comes to eating. I just don't keep bad food in my house. Um, diet is so hard to figure out exercise for a lot of people. Um, you know, for me, it's something that I love, but I, it's so hard for people that don't just outright love it to get into it everyone can get used to taking a cold shower in the morning. So I think that's what's so powerful about the cold. And I really like things that are quick and efficient, um, like to call them hacks a lot of time, but I, I kind of don't, because they're not cheating, like they're real techniques, but anything that's just quick and efficient and easy um, is really, really powerful for this stuff. And I, you know, cold showers are like my biggest recommendation. Like if you're going to start and do anything right now, um, start taking a cold shower in the morning. <laughs> Sorry about that. Dogs. Of course. <laughs> hey. Um, <laughs> and if you don't, if you're really averse to the cold, just do 10 to 20 seconds hot and then switch it to cold for 20 seconds, as cold as you can bear. Do that for 10 rounds. Even that is backed by direct evidence. I think the uh, doctor I follow that did a study on this, I think it was Jack Cruz, uh, K-R-U-S-E. I can't remember off the top of my head. It might have been someone else. But even that has positive benefits for fat burning, also for mood, um, causes you to release endorphins. And like I mentioned at the beginning of all this, um, heart rate variability. I've measured this personally, and I've read a lot of other people who've measured this um, heart rate variability, measure of nervous system function, fight or flight response, how healthy all that is. Um, mine improves when I'm doing regular cold therapy, even just the cold showers, uh, none of the really, really deep stuff. So that's, um, so that's, that, that's really interesting because uh, for mm -hmm. me, um, I've been doing for the last about two months or so, um, just the really mm -hmm. simple cold shower. So I start hot, I go cold. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, cause there's a lot of hard charges out there and like, especially in our community, yeah. you say like take cold showers and they'll immediately immerse themselves in like an ice bath and sit yeah. there for like 15 <laughs> minutes and be like, oh. Yeah. oh, so you have to really temper what you're saying because a lot of times they'll go really hard, really fast. But yeah. then it, it'll be so painful that the, the idea of doing it takes way too much willpower. And yeah. uh, you just basically you, you de deplete that willpower so much by doing that one thing during the day that yeah. the rest of the day isn't as effective. So um, that yeah. minimum effective dose concept, and you wrote, I wrote a cool yeah, article powerful. about that as well, um, like minimum effective dose for fat loss. This is something mm -hmm. that's got really, really high effectiveness for a very mm -hmm. short window of time. So, yes. Uh, and it's essentially free yeah. and anybody yeah. can do it. That's, that's the awesome part. Like you can, it is. anybody can hop in a shower and just do 10 seconds, 10 seconds, 10 seconds, mm -hmm. and just build yourself up to it. And like, I'm a bitch when it comes to it. Like I hate it, but I, I do it. Yeah, I get that. I feel so fresh. And I've mm -hmm. done it before going to bed. I've done it when I wake up. Um, and so it is part of my daily habit now because of that, that freshness. And, you know, yeah. anecdotally, over the past three months, you know, I've, my waistline has gone down uh, four inches. And, oh, yeah. you know, like I haven't increased my training volume that much. But yeah. one thing I did incorporate was a lot more cold showers. Um, yeah. And so just with slight changes just like that yeah. you can initiate like a hormonal change which ends yeah. up creating so much out. change but now, that is amazing it is and it's it's interesting you mentioned your waistline specifically and you know one of the most stubborn areas to lose weight is very specifically that midriff you know it's like the uh like kind of right below the navel 
the fat that you store there is related to uh, stress hormones, um, I believe cortisol specifically. And I, I'm 90% certain I read this specifically, but cold therapy, I know it's really good at optimizing your cortisol. I do know that, like that I've read, but I think I've even seen some direct research on it being more effective than other ways of losing weight for that stubborn belly fat. Like specifically that's like that area, um, which would make sense because it's, you know, hormones basically run your body, especially when it comes to your metabolism. and if you know like we're talking about with these theories cold exposure is activating these kind of dormant systems that's going to have a really really powerful effect on your hormone function um and i experienced the exact same thing i first started doing cold work uh when i was training for crossfit and you know where i was at before i started doing just cold showers um, and i would do them like all throughout the day um, just three or four times a day, just because like you get to a point where, you know, obviously I live, I live in Dallas, Texas. So during the summer, a cold shower feels pretty great. Um, yeah. During, you know, during the winter, and I'm sure a lot, you know, a lot of the time in Canada, um, it's hard to get in the cold when it's cold outside, um, if you're not like really, really, really used to it. Um, but yeah, I just like, I didn't lose muscle mass, I leaned out more, I had more energy. Um, my favorite thing from it is just like the euphoria feelings from it. It's like right after a cold shower, it just, you just feel, and you know, most people just feel happy and like kind of ready to take on the day. And, uh, I mean, I think it's a very, very powerful thing to just be able to feel fresh, you know, throughout your day, Never mind exercise and health, like, you know, as a writer, and I'm, I know that you can probably relate to this, but trying to focus on your work um, without being in a bad mood and, you know, just being kind of chilled out, but energized. Um, I mean, I think it's one of the biggest hacks out there just for everything. Like you give me a CEO who doesn't care about his health at all. I'd tell him to do the same thing. So. Right. Um, yeah. And you mentioned cortisol, which is uh, really, mm-hmm. it's a topic that I've kind of started to drill down into because, mm-hmm. you know, I've been dealing with since I got back from from my mission, just mm-hmm. the 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 stress overload that you experience, and when you come home, if you don't deal with that stress, and for me it was oh, man, I'm good to go, I'm fine, and so yeah. the, the central nervous system takes that mm-hmm. that load, even though you know you're rationalizing I'm fine, the central nervous yeah. system is still processing and it's yeah. jacked up. And it is. that that adrenal hormone, you know, that cortisol, um, mm-hmm. I was just washed out, and I didn't understand why things like, hey, why aren't I losing weight, man? Like I, I was hitting the CrossFit yeah. gym like hard, and yeah. I was getting fatter and heavier, yeah. and it, 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 you know, I'm a trainer, and that'll and, make you like what? And I'm educated, <laughs> and like I read, and I'm just like why 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 and like my wife's yeah. like stop complaining man you're fine i'm like no but i'm i want to look as good yeah. as i as hard as i train like it was a vain is a vanity yeah. thing i don't want to keep on getting fatter and i just i'm just slow yeah. cognitively things were shittier and so yeah. I started looking at things like cortisol and you know i i think it's a real when, when we deal with like especially veterans health yeah we work a lot with you know going to see your therapist and you know working on yeah. just the, the psychological issues that are there yeah. but a lot of times i think we, we miss kind of that 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 holistic approach where hey what's your blood chemistry like right now because if you yeah. are just pumping out cortisol because you're always in that fight or flight situation yeah how do we bring that down a notch so that yeah. you can actually recover so that you can actually start losing weight so that you know oh, yeah everything gets properly regulated at that point because yeah I mean, cortisol has its benefit, but when you're washed out in it, it creates yeah. a whole cascade of, of, of nastiness. So are you able to, to kind of expand a little bit on that, that cortisol effect? Oh, yeah. So I'm no, I'm no deep expert on cortisol, but I've actually been doing the same thing as you. I've been looking into it recently. Um, cortisol is interesting. So we have a rhythm throughout the day for all of our hormones. Um, cortisol is supposed to be highest in the morning and lowest at night. Um, cortisol has positive 
it's it has positive benefits. It's anti-inflammatory. It lowers your pain response. Um, it's a good hormone for facing stress. However, cortisol also is a bit of a bully. It blunts other hormone production. So if you're in fight or flight mode and you're producing cortisol, I think a big misconception with cortisol is that cortisol itself does bad things. It actually, from what I've been looking at, because this is new information for me too, cortisol doesn't do bad things to you. It doesn't increase inflammation. It doesn't cause you to gain more fat. But being in that state, cortisol will block you from creating as much testosterone or growth hormone. And I think it's more about your body having the fight or flight signal than it is about the cortisol itself. Because what actually happens in the long, long run is you can begin to burn out your cortisol completely. Um, and one of the things that happens when you release cortisol, at least according to what I've looked at, is you also release adrenaline. And if you hit that point where you're releasing cortisol or you're not releasing cortisol because you're just out of the resources, but you are releasing adrenaline, um, this is kind of a tangent from what you were asking about, but this is what my experience was. You start to feel symptoms that feel like anxiety. You have a high heart rate, but you don't feel that lack of pain. You know, you don't feel that toughness that cortisol gives you. You just have a high heart rate or you just have palpitation, you just feel edgy. And that's just kind of a way to show, you know, I think the veteran community, from what I've heard, um, they're very aware of the mental side of it. I think a lot of, you know, obviously a lot of these guys want to tough it out, but I think it's just like PTSD and these mental uh, issues that come from the extreme experience that war can be. Um, I think that we all know or all know we should go look at our mental health in a situation like that. I kind of come from the opposite side. I never went and did any of that kind of stuff. So I dove completely into the health side of it. Um, and I think what people can miss out on is like as you burn out those resources, even if your mental health is the source, like that trauma or whatever is the first reason, as you burn out those resources, you might not be able to replenish them. Um, you definitely can't replenish them as fast if kind of the way I look at it and the, the way that cortisol um, plays into my life is like, so I was doing CrossFit. I got my health issues from overtraining in CrossFit. And the first thing I experienced was uh, I, I was working out. I went to use the sauna and then felt really weird, probably heat exhaustion um, or something like that. And it triggered like a really big panic attack. I got deeply into the health side of things. I really looked at adrenal fatigue um, and cortisol because the way I looked at it is I didn't go through something traumatic. I was doing things that I love to do and I started getting issues anyway. Learning about cortisol as you burn out that hormone from stress or just overburdening yourself, um, which is what I thought I did, um, you start to run out of that hormone. When you run out, you can experience all sorts of different things, um, gaining weight, um, anxiety, a lot of the effects of feeling adrenaline, but without feeling that cortisol um, protective effect, because, you know, like we mentioned earlier, cortisol, um, the purpose of it is to get you through a dangerous situation. The flip side of that is that you're also in thinking you're in a dangerous situation or just being burnt out or your body thinking you're in a dangerous situation, it's going to block the production of other hormones. And I think the two big ones that get blocked from being produced, testosterone is one of them. Um, I think the other one might be uh, insulin. And those two, like if you're in a situation where your body is not producing testosterone or insulin like it should, um, I mean, that's for a guy, that's like everything, you know, it's like low testosterone, you know, it's, it's from libido, but also like heart attack risk, like all sorts of different stuff there. Um, insulin obviously plays a factor into gaining weight, um, poor digestion of food, inflammation from blood sugar swings and things like that. And I think with regards to the military community, if you're already doing all the work on uh, the therapy side of it, 
um, you're doing in psychological work, you're working on, you know, if you have PTSD, trying to address that, but you overexercise or you eat a poor diet or you don't have enough recovery style behaviors, um, you know, you might get rid of the mental trauma that is causing you to be in a fight or flight state, but you might be so low resource that your body still stays in that state. Um, the interesting thing for me is I kind of experienced it in the opposite. I labeled my issues as not being mental because it was something I enjoyed doing and I just started getting the issues anyway. And then I addressed the health side of it and shored up all my resources, took all the different herbs, did things like cold shower therapy, um, all these things to support my cortisol. Um, but actually the number one thing that helped me the most is I did EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization. It's trauma therapy. It's basically you follow a dot on a screen and it puts your mind in the place it is when you do rapid eye movement sleep where it processes memories and they have you think of memories that you still feel. It's like uh, they ask you, are there memories that you think of when you're feeling tense or feeling poor in some way? And then you process that. Um, and that's when I actually finally started feeling completely normal like I had before all my issues. Um, like I said, I think a lot of guys in the military side of it, and not even just the military, but athletes and hard chargers have the opposite of experience. Like everything is about willpower. Everything is about your head. Um, everything is about how you address it mentally. But you might not have the resources anymore. And things like cold therapy that can optimize your hormones, take you out of that fight or flight response, uh, lower your inflammation. Um, and also a huge, huge, huge area as well, and I'm sure you've talked about it a ton on your podcast already, but the mobility side of things and doing that tissue work, uh, stretching, uh, releasing that kind of tension. Do you, uh, do you know who uh, David Goggins is? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured. I was like, I'm asking one of those. <laughs> can't hurt me, bro. Can't hurt me. <laughs> can't hurt me. Taking souls. Uh, yeah, taking souls. Hell yeah. Um, but one of the most interesting things in his uh, book is towards the end of the book, you know, he's such a hard charger. And, you know, for anyone, I'm sure most of you do know who David Goggins is, but he was a, uh, grew up in a terrible lifestyle, you know dad who like ran a prostitution ring and like they had to help you know work all that and all that kind of stuff ran away lived in like a very racist town became a navy seal at the end of all this just took this total willpower mindset towards things and i love that stuff like it's phenomenal but eventually he started getting chronic health problems and what he did to get out of that was he would stretch for two hours a day because he had these massive knots of tension in his body, so much so he could physically feel them. He said it was like baseballs on his hips and on the back of his skull. And cold showers, mobility work, um, proper sleep, you know, all of these things that are easy to do, I think especially for hard charges as well. Like we like that. You know, how tough can I be? Cold showers, even though they're short, they're not pleasant, but they're short. So you can take that, you can use that charge through a wall mentality to your advantage. Go do those kind of things that are kind of a challenge. It's like, you know, I think stretching is one of the most challenging things for someone like that because it takes all this patience. Use that as fuel. Look at it like, I'm so tough that I can be patient and sit here in agony. Not that it should be agonizing, but, you know, take the challenge on of basically torturing yourself. You know, it's like we can all throw the barbell, but sit on a lacrosse ball in a place that's tight and do that for a long time. It's painful, um, but it's also recovery. And I think that's really, really where, you know, you can – make your process of just being healthier mentally and physically better is anything that promotes that recovery. We all have plenty of stress, no matter who you are, even if you don't exercise, we have plenty of stress already. Doing things that promote recovery will help 
like unless you're a monk or something, I, I haven't met someone living in the US who truly would not benefit from more recovery of some kind. So, um, and I think that's really the big theme with cortisol is it's just like, this is your stress hormone. You start to burn out of it because you're in fight or flight. We're in fight or flight because we're under stress. Um, and you might not have ever done the military and you might not have done what I did with the CrossFit. Um, life is very, very complicated. Um, in fact, I, I know several people who have been in the military and they're more stressed out by life here. It's not as dangerous, oh, but it's hands like, down, man. Hands down. Oh yeah. There's so it's many like, more things to worry about. There are. That's, that's the, that's the reason Listen. why you go, you go, you go deploy. And like I tell my wife, like we're, we're kind of like with this whole COVID-19, we're kind of, I'm kind of in like tour mode right now. The amount of yeah. stuff that I need to worry about has been decreased. Yeah. Okay. I need to sit at home. Okay, cool. Uh, we can get yeah. some covered. Okay, cool. All we need to do yeah. is take care of the kids, make sure we take care of ourselves and just kind of yeah. chill out. And so that just down regulates everything. Like I don't need to worry about finding parking. I don't need to worry about it. Like I, you know, I'll call my parents. They're good. Okay. So we just bring everything down a notch and that, you know, for when I tell that to my friends that are not military, they're like, how can it be less you stressful? Talking about? Yeah. You have to deal with the tower. That, yeah. But it's, that's like the game. It's like, okay, you shoot at us. We shoot at no. you. We know what's going to happen. We play a little IED tag. We make sure we don't get blown yeah. up. Ha ha ha. Like, I, I don't want to make light of it, but like that, that's, it's a it routine. And it turns into yeah. something that you know what the outcome more or less. It can be chaotic, yeah. but that's like the one percent of what's going on. Everything else is just really, it's really yeah. easy. Like if you need to roll down. up on a village, you just you don't have to worry about parking. You just yeah. park your fucking vehicle, man. Like we got a big yeah. vehicle. We got guns You're out in the world. Yeah, we do. We got. Yeah. We, we do what we need to do, and that, it, it's very simple and basic. Um. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I, yeah, I, I like. Uh, the, what you mentioned about like cortisol and uh, the different hormones and testosterone and, mm -hmm. and, um, and insulin. And yeah, yeah you're, you're bang on, man. Like when you're, when you're in that fight or flight yeah. or lifestyle, whatever you want to call it, um, you're, not, mm -hmm. you're not in any sort of anabolic hormonal state. No, you're not. You're totally catabolic. And so, yeah, yeah. testosterone, forget about it. like and that yeah. is that is a yeah. pattern i see repeated not only myself but with you know clients yeah. that i work with over and over and over again um and i'm reading a really uh, great book actually on um, the obesity code by uh, dr uh, dr fung oh yeah i've heard of it it's, yeah. and it's brilliant because i mean he's he's talking about uh just you know what we're talking about here insulin if you're not controlling that bad boy as one of your like, master hormones you're not you're not going to be uh nearly as optimal as you should be and no. uh, it fats a tissue and it's a it's a, it's it's an organism that's living inside of you um, yeah you need to you need to treat that with respect as well so um can we uh just switch gears a little bit um i wanted i wanted to just uh chat a little bit more on um how do we how do we get so let's say you know i i, I mean i'm using veterans as a as an example, but let's say any human being in general, what would be like, we've talked about cold induced therapy. What would be just a, a, a simple protocol that if you're starting from zero um, and you want to stop optimizing, how would you go about um, advising? Doing that. Okay. Um, let me, sorry, I'm just trying to plug in so that I can keep my battery up. Um, just kind of a total optimization. There's honestly a lot of places you can start from. Like I'd even go as far as say like, I like having people kind of run with the things that feel right. Like run with the things that you're interested in first, because you'll actually stick with them. Um, like use your enthusiasm to your advantage. Um, Cause you can really start almost anywhere. Uh, biohacking. I don't like to use that term too much because it's become a little bit faddish, but I love that the term exists. All it is is just caring about your health. There's not any cheats to improving your health. Something does or it doesn't. Um, and if it does, you know, we call it biohacking. The term though, it comes from the idea that with computers, and I know I'm not a computer nerd. I've just heard this description. <laughs> okay. But hackers like complex systems. 
because there's more points of entry. There's more places where you can influence the entire system. Simple systems have fewer points of entry. You know, if you have like, I don't know what a good example of a simple system would be, but like there's only two or three nodes of input. If none of those can be modified to get what you want, then you can't hack it. Biology is incredibly complex. So you can influence it from so many different places. I think if I were to have someone start like trying to just totally optimize their life, um, my biggest advice is to simplify and go for minimum effective dose. Um, my experience with healing was interesting because I had very little resources. Um, I'm about to be 25 and I started having my issues when I was 22 um, and I couldn't really work enough to do a lot of blood testing or things like that um, that can be good when you're starting. But I just started listening to podcasts and, you know, testing things on myself and seeing what helped and what worked. Um, I think that hormones are a really good place to look. Um, I've started getting to a point where I think everyone should do a full thyroid test um, at least once a year uh, because thyroid is the master gland for all your hormones. Um, if it's not working correctly, you can have pretty much any kinds of issues um, and especially mental issues. Uh, hypothyroid, which is low thyroid function, you can have issues with um, low energy response to temperature. There was a while that even though I knew cold was good for me, I really couldn't get myself to do it because I was too sensitive to temperature. Um, the big thing on thyroid, and you wanna make sure you do a full thyroid panel and that it includes thyroid antibodies, which means autoimmunity. It means your body is attacking its own thyroid. Um, one of the ways I think that autoimmunity is a big factor that's overlooked. Um, the big thing I've come across looking at a lot of chronic diseases, trying to figure out what I had, is they all seem to have the same source. Your body is out of resources. It might manifest as multiple sclerosis or Parkinson's or adrenal fatigue or chronic fatigue, but the reason it starts is because your body is overstressed and out of resources and it's attacking itself. Um, I guess, it, like, I'm sorry to be so vague, but it's just like, it depends what level of optimal you're trying to go for. If you're trying to do like a very, like, let's check my health in the long run, um, I'd say start by doing a thyroid panel, um, make sure it has antibodies, do a little research on what a good thyroid panel would be. Um, easy place to get that info. There's this chick named Isabella Wentz. It's W-E-N-T-S. Um, She's a writer, but you can just look up her and look up, you know, thyroid panel. As far as action steps, just start trying to live in kind of an ancestral way. Um, get yourself out into the world and expose yourself to environmental stressors. Um, expose yourself to exercise. Expose yourself to the cold. Um, get out into the sun. All of these factors help. Um, Sunlight, vitamin D, hugely beneficial. Um, cold, as we've been talking about on this, has all these powerful things. Living in a more natural way, the more that you can do that, despite our very technological, you know, sit down and work type lifestyle, the better. Um, move your body, get outside, expose yourself to environmental stressors, and I'd say try to eat well, try to eat naturally. Um, diet is a really difficult nut to crack for a lot of people. Um, but the biggest thing with diet is like, you might have food sensitivities, but if you're trying to eat natural foods, um, it's gonna be a lot better than eating processed foods. Um, it's interesting to me, cause like a lot of this stuff, like people look at us biohackers as being like super nerdy into this stuff, but almost everything that works well has the same base in just doing what we did a thousand years ago um, or something like that. So uh, yeah, I think those are just kind of big pillars. It's like 
move well, eat well, sleep well, get outside. And the biggest, biggest one, recover and don't overdo it. Um, your audience, I think, is going to need that one a lot more. There's definitely another side where there's people who don't do enough, and there's a lot of those people too. But I think we underestimate how many people, you know, they really want this change, so they go too far with something, you know, whether that's exercise or anything else. Um, I think that exercise especially, it should always be fun. You know, if it's starting to get not fun, you don't have to even take a break. Um, but try a different one. Like if you love CrossFit, but you know, you're starting to gain weight, you know, you're probably overdoing it or something like that. Take up like try rock climbing for a while or something like that. Like take a week off and then get into rock climbing for a while or something like that. Um, it's not really a simple answer, but in terms of like the overall journey of it, it's just like try different things. Um, try to live healthy, try to do the things that are fun, um, and just kind of watch yourself too. Um, watch out that you're recovering well, and if the things you're doing aren't working, keep looking to try new things. Um, that was a big thing with my health issues, is like something would work, so I would dive into that specific thing, and I would forget these other things I'd read about. And uh, going and doing EMDR, um, which is that psychological work, um, I knew when I first started getting issues that that kind of work would be, would probably be the most helpful. I just couldn't afford it at the time. And I got so deep into the health world and I still knew that was something to go do, but I just delayed and delayed and delayed. Cause I was like, just in that mindset, like I've done health things that helped. They haven't fixed it fully, but they helped. So I'm just going to stick with that. Try new things, branch out into areas you're, haven't done yet um right make those new neural connections like right it makes there's your brain so, so much options. healthier yeah. yeah like you can get overwhelmed with it but there's so many options out there man it's like i i really hate hearing about people who give up on solving their problems because it's like it's 2020 you know it's like someone out there has had your problem and fixed it you know go look for those people read their material um do what they did and never stop trying. It's like, we only get this one life, man. Like, might as well continue trying to live optimally. Even if you, com even if you fail, I would rather keep trying till the day I die than give up because I got impatient or it stopped working. So it's the long you know. game. It's the yeah. long game approach, man. You know, yeah. we're project we're, you know, we're projected to, to live past our hundreds, right? Like, you know, yeah. you're in your thirties and like, ah, oh, damn it. I'm hurt. I'm not doing well, man down yeah. downhill from here well you might have yes. 80 more years. years yeah come on you a know like time. just keep on uh, keep on hacking away and eventually you know like you said uh, and there's a there's a good quote i, I can't remember who it got from but like if you want to mm -hmm. look at if you want to see a sunset stop walking east you know like just make yeah. sure make sure that okay if something's not working well assess you know yeah. recalibrate and re-engage and and yeah um, make something happen. And that's the beauty of yeah. you know, podcasting and having access to, you know, the internet oh, has yeah. really opened up everything to everybody. Yeah. And it doesn't matter Learn. young, old, um, you know, there's no, at no point are you like past a threshold where it's like, okay, yeah. you know, why, why would I, because I'm too old? Yeah. Like that, that doesn't, that doesn't compute for me. And hopefully, me especially in the community, it, it, it shouldn't be a, a, a time where, oh, okay, well, I'm too old to start doing X, yeah. Y. And I yeah. you mentioned a whole bunch of, you know, like the environmental stresses because, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the difference between, you know, stress as we see it as like something bad, yeah. but there's you stress, right? That's that, that good yeah, stress. Exactly. You know? We need to constantly yeah. feed to ourselves because if not, we're going to seek out stress in everyday yeah. shit and, um, right. you know, like to be able to, to keep on the level working out yeah. is one of them right like if you're working out relatively mm -hmm. hard and you've got you know you're not overdoing it that's a form yeah. of stress that ends up creating super compensation you get stronger and then same with yeah. going into the cold a little bit of stress does the body good and that 
you know, everything that we're talking about here kind of feeds into the building that stronger, more optimal human being and your body yeah. responds to that, that, that the little bit of stress it does a body good. And then it's, it's like yeah. kind of finding that balance. It's like, Oh, I really like training. Well, if you go yeah. too hard, then you've thrown yourself out of that homeostatic yeah. balance. So, and that's yeah. where kind of understanding your body and just realizing oh, yeah. too much too hard. I mean, I, and I just had a great conversation with, um, Dr. Uh, Parsley, who's a sleep uh, specialist. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Freaking uh, awesome. And, yeah. you know, just talked about sleep and he's like, you, you don't, you, the first pillar is sleep eight to nine hours. He's like, don't compromise if yeah. and you're talking about recovery time every night. yeah that recovery yeah. is so important and it is you know, we're talking about ptsd yeah. and everything like that and he talks about the same thing and it's, you yeah. know you may you you may exhibit signs of like like psychological distress you might just be chronically exhausted and you need yeah. to get your ass to bed yeah so there's so much there or it's a long game because yeah. it's like it's a. Uh, do you do you follow Mark Divine at all of uh, Seal? No, Fit? no. So he, um, I really like him. He, he, my favorite book I've ever, ever read is his Way of the Seal, and I know how like, you know, generic like, you know, put in like military life on a pedestal that title sounds. But what the guy actually was, he was a Seal commander for twenty years, but he is also a martial artist and a yogi, and. He was a CPA before he went into the SEALs. Um, but his book, it's like a multi-faceted book for how to go through life. And it's really business, purpose, um, and then tools, I would say. Like, um, uh, he you know, has parts on building your intuition. Like, it's literally, it's a book written by a guy who's a Navy SEAL that taught me the most about how to meditate of any book I've had. Like, yes. Mm specific exercises um really really cool dude you should try to connect with him if you can because he runs a podcast on called uh, unbeatable mind um yeah but what i love about his stuff and I've, I've seen it as like a very i think military approach but it's you know it's not just restricted to the military but it's like seeing the path setting your nodes it's like goal oriented forward movement and what i'm going to with recovery recovery is an active thing it's a thing that you do um because you know we talk about burnout a lot in this but the opposite side of burnout is stagnation recovery is not stagnation um it should be something that you're doing actively um even has a plan especially if you're trying to address a big issue um but it's a process, you know, as you're doing these things, set your goals, observe where you are, be ready to pivot in different directions as you need to. Um, watch out for when you're starting to get into a rut because that's a sign you need to go on a vacation or do something that breaks that pattern. Um, I really do love listening to like top level guys who've gone through the military because I think like, you know, you guys just get a really good sense for how to achieve things. And a big part of that is knowing when to break your own patterns and break everything down and then rebuild it. And I think that's what people have a really hard time getting around to is, you know, you know, in this life, it's super easy to get stuck in the same routine for years. And you're going to have problems that are going to stay there for years. You know, you have to break your routines and also be able to make good plans and new routines. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many topics on all this kind of stuff. Um, especially if, like with regard, like I love Kelly Sturette's work, um, especially with regard to him looking at like stagnation in the schools and things like that. Um, I started listening to your podcast with him a little bit and, uh, you know, y'all were talking about like, um, just how pitiful some of the physical adequacy of like high school students is these days. And it's just like, We've got great people out here who know the solutions. It just needs to become more mainstream. So um, Heads down. I, I, I love that you're doing this. I, I want to start doing a podcast as well and uh, really just be a part of this movement because it's not going away anytime soon and people really, really need it. It's like 
they're burnt out and the challenges are not going away. So you're right, man. Um, yeah. And uh, if I could recommend just get her started, mm-hmm. just yeah. put some audio uh, down and, yeah. you know, hit record. Um, and you know, you've got a wealth of knowledge that, you know, already, you know, this community here is going to appreciate greatly. And, um, the more voices that are out there, you know, and the, yeah. the common, the common arguments like, Oh, there's already so many. Yep. Okay. But how many TV shows are there? How many radio shows are out there? You know, like you, you, nobody watches like from person to person, the variability in what shows you watch. Yeah. You know, like between me and my wife, like, we don't like the same things between me and my best friend. We don't like the same things. So yeah, you, you have the whole planet now that's available as long as you're speaking, you know, as long as you speak English, can yeah. listen to your stuff. And so you have this, this audience that, you know, you're putting out good stuff people are going to yeah. listen. So yeah, highly recommend you do that, man. And yeah. you know, like you've been talking um, I appreciate a, that. a lot about, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You've been talking a lot about just, you know, being just the better, a better human being. And that's a message yeah. that no matter what day and age we live in, so long as we don't become yeah. like cybernetically implanted human beings where yeah. we have like another level, which will probably come in the next 50 years, Somewhere, we're still going to be yeah. talking about, we're still going to be talking about the same things, man, because human beings, it's the same genetic makeup exactly. and we need to keep on doing the same things and we're learning more and more about yeah. how how to optimize and i think it's something that we probably instinctively knew way back when we didn't need to have yeah. scientists tell us we just knew that you know things like fasting things like cold yeah. water things like a little bit of stress things like uh, even hopping in a sauna like all these little things eating you know high quality meats these are all things that we just we knew but now like through industrialization we kind of lost that a little bit and now we're starting to bring it back because we have so many good voices out there that can explain things to us in common sense terms and starting to slowly change so dude yeah. i really appreciate everything that we've gone over here man we could definitely oh, do a whole we could, we could definitely do a bunch of different podcasts just on half of the perfect. stuff that we've gone over so yeah. um <laughs> you've gone over a, a bunch of awesome uh influencers that you've uh obviously listened to and read and stuff <laughs> like that so um let's just hop right into what makes you hard to kill man oh man you know um the funny thing is I actually have, I thought about this. I was listening to one of your other podcasts and saw you like ask those questions. Um, I actually think that in a way I'm relatively easy to kill. And that's kind of, <laughs> that's a first, me. that's a first. I like this well, honesty. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I don't know. Like I always grew up as like a very cautious, um, kind of cautious kid. Um, but love the stories of like soldiers and self-sufficiency and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, the health issues, all those kind of things. I think what makes me hard to kill is understanding the ways that I ha- it's understanding my limits and understanding the things where I fall short and always keeping those things in my mind. Um, you know, I grew up, I had ADD, like I was always a smart kid, but I did poor in school. And I know a lot of soldiers that can relate to that. Um, but you know, wasn't great in sports until I eventually like in like eighth grade started doing martial arts. And, uh, I look at the areas where I have shortcomings and it's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the book, the obstacle is the way it's, uh, yeah. I try to think in that mindset. It's like the things that would make me easy to kill, I will always be working on at some level. Um, And the other thing too, I studied Buddhism growing up and I'm not Buddhist per se, but they view life as a journey. They don't view it as a thing where you arrive and then you're done. Um, That's how I look at it too. It's like, I'm grateful for my limitations because they just tell me what, to do next, you know? So, um, as far as a more literal thing on what makes me hard to kill, um, I, I don't know. I love martial arts. Um, that bomb dog guy that I was talking about, the guy helps, he's actually a phenomenal martial artist. Um, the best I've ever seen. Uh, he does this martial art called Dida Ru, IQ Jiu Jitsu. It's all wrist locks. Like you throw a punch and they'll just get you in a wrist lock and you can't do anything anymore. And, uh, I grew up doing Taekwondo, which is, it's great, but he just, Daideru is just this uber practical, like once they have you, you're done. 
Um, nothing you can do about it. And I love stuff like that. Um, and I've always worked on at least one or two things to be learning at a time to be literally hard to kill. So that's the current one for me right now. Um, the next one I really want to get into is like survival and stuff like that. Cause I've, I've done a lot of deep backpacking, but never like, okay, if COVID were to end society, which mm. it's not going to, but you know, walking dead style, right. Walking dead style. Um, what kind of skills can you have where when all of this collapses, if it collapses in your lifetime, you can still move forward and still create value, but you know, be able to not only survive, but also thrive. And uh, I mean, I think that that's a really good way to look at life in the long run. Cause you can look at anything from that perspective. Um, it's a lot like uh what was it? I think it was Musashi, the book of five rings where it's like the art of the sword was a metaphor for everything, but everything was also a metaphor for the warrior art of the sword. Mm -hmm. He was into calligraphy and like the tea ceremony. It all served the same purpose of that warrior spirit. So, um, yeah, what makes me hard to kill is I, I, I want to always be moving forward and learning. So solid, solid. I love, I love that. I, I love that you mentioned, yeah, if civilization ends, mm -hmm. at what point am I useful to my new band of yeah. wandering nomads? Uh, and it's something that I think about all the time, too. I'm like, okay. What can you do? I, yeah, what can I do? Okay, I know how to shoot a rifle really well. Yeah. I know how to live in the woods. I, I can lead. And mm -hmm. I'm a pretty good cook. So there we go. I, there got, you go. I, got, my, I got my basis cover. And when civilization starts to uh, refresh itself, I'm a teacher. Perfect. Get teach kids. Exactly. So I'm like, okay, cool. And it's funny because when I, um, when I was back at, when I was back at university, mm -hmm. one of my first, one of my first lessons, um, my, one of my first lectures back, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'd, I'd come back from Afghanistan. I was getting my career back, back up and started. So I'm like, oh, I'll go back to school. And I was anxious. Cause I was like, man, can I do this? Am I going yeah. to be in the right spot? <laughs> like, I don't know. And it's cool. My prof came in and he was total, total egghead hyper intelligent you know i think he wrote a unicycle to class i was like oh god you know like <laughs> here we go right. but he I, I really enjoyed like I, I i didn't see eye to eye in a lot of things they talked about but uh, i respected his um his ability to convey a message yeah. and just you know his point of points of view and he was very eloquent and he did mention he's like he's like look dave like in front of everybody he's like i if civilization collapses, I, re I, re I recognize I'm totally useless. And the only reason why I'm useful and a benefit to society right now is because of society. Mm -hmm. If it collapses, I don't know what I would do. And it'd be the guys like you that have a bunch of different skill sets that would be a lot more yeah. uh, valuable. He's like, so don't yeah. devalue the fact that, you know, you don't have necessarily as you haven't read as many books as I have, or, you know, he's like, this is just what I do now. And I recognize that I'm not as useful in a society that may not be able to yeah. support universities. So I was like, that's a very cool point. Um, and very um, introspective for a guy like that to be able to to spot and so very similar yeah. to what you were saying you know like know what your weaknesses are but also keep in the back of your mind that you know always be yeah. on that journey don't just think like okay yeah. i've reached my i've reached my apex i'm good i'm done i got to the finish line so i think yeah. that's a great i think that's a yeah exactly i think that's a great way to to finish up today man so really appreciate you coming on i think we definitely need to do i really appreciate one, it yeah, I, I would love to do you. another one. Awesome. <laughs> and then once you start up your podcast, I'll come on your. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a ch we'll have a chat, chat, dude. Thanks, this yeah. has been awesome. All right, man. So enjoy the rest of the day in uh, in sunny too, or man. or cloudy Texas. I can't really tell. And uh, it's um, sunny. <laughs> okay, and then uh, yeah, I'll enjoy my uh, my COVID nineteen quarantine here uh, in Montreal. Yeah, walking around my property a few more times with my kids. <laughs> yeah, we're in the same boat with you, man. Have All a good right, one. dude. Yeah, you too, man. Cheers. See ya. Thanks for listening to the podcast. You can find out more about training, nutrition, and mindset at DaveMorrow.net. Be sure to like us on Facebook and Instagram at DaveMorrowPT. And don't forget, strong people are hard to kill.